Hi, I'm actor Ross O'Hennessy. Uh, I'm best known for playing the Lord of Bones in Game of Thrones, and I'm also known for playing Sir Locke in Kurt Sutter's The Bastard Executioner. Hi, I'm Simon Fox. I'm a drama student, and this is my drama tutor. We work very closely together, and maybe one day if I put in enough hard work and enough dedication, he just might get me a decent job one day. Well, I took the sudden change of direction because I'm coming up for 50 this year, and it's one of those things in life, you never want to regret anything. And at the end of the day, when I was asked if I'd be interested in, in getting back involved in, in principal acting as a, as a drama student, I thought it was the best phone call I could have ever taken. And to, to be in Cardiff, um, which is now a hotbed for um, drama in television, film, and even theater, there was, there was no case to answer, really. I just knew I wanted to be here amongst it all and having the chance, really, to do something I've always wanted to do, and that is just, you know, work hard at becoming a, a drama student and becoming a professional actor. And with the help of this lovely guy here to my right, Mr. Ross O'Hennessy, he's making it happen for me. Um, <clears throat> so I started myself back in drama school. I went to one of the best drama schools in Britain, and that was way 25 years ago. I was very lucky. Um, I was a young boy from the South Wales Valleys, and I went to a drama school because I was on a scholarship. So I had the privilege of going there because somebody else paid. After leaving drama school, I did the whole Royal Shakespeare Company. One of my first jobs I ever did was with, was with Lauren Bacall. I had this great career break, but I noticed that the working class actor, um, I still came from humble roots, the gulf was getting bigger and bigger. And all the years that I've worked and the more and more productions that I've worked in, I'm very, very much aware now that um, drama schools have become more and more expensive, more and more difficult to get into, uh, and, and generally the gulf between what we could say upper middle class to affluent actors to working class as the guttural actors of the world was becoming wider. So uh, a short while ago I thought to myself, two years ago when I was doing a, a, a show that Foxy was in, uh, I thought to myself, no I want to give back. I want to give back to some actors who don't have the money to be able to afford top drama training. So I set up uh, a little short course um, which is running now under Larker workshops and uh, I give away all that expensive drama school training for nothing to these guys. For which I'm eternally grateful for. <laughs> so when I went to drama school, and all drama schools produce a product, okay, no different to Simon Cowell and the X Factor, there is a product in mind. But that's changed because, like, after the war, there was like 5,000 actors. Then, 20 years later, there were 75,000 actors. Now there are millions of actors. And if a film company want a one-legged, eight-stone actor with one blue eye and one green eye, they'll put a casting out and they will get one. So acting has changed. And all of a sudden, this ability to be many different characters is not as important as to be good at what you do. So we need to take common actors like Foxy, we need to work on him, we need to get him the best of what he can be, and then he can go out and get his first jobs, being the best Foxy he can produce. And from that core basis, you can step into the myriad of other roles that you expand into. So with that, then we come full circle to what you said. Anybody, at any time, can become an actor, because that character will be needed in a play. When they need a 50-year-old man, we need 50-year-old actors. When they want 20-year-old boys, we need 20-year-old boys. So so therefore it's important that the acting genre is filled with people from all walks of life. Well I actually come from a farming background um, early in my life and then I, I, I worked for an import-export company driving big uh, heavy plant machinery for want of a better word and I've been a civil servant for the government, um, I've been self-employed, I've had my own marketing business so I've got a a wide experience over what nearly 30 odd years of working and always had a love of drama but never knew what to do with it and I've sort of networked my way through doing various things I've done some various things for the BBC um, like casualty Doctor Who Sherlock and so forth as a as a supporting artist back in the day and now it's my opportunity now to move forward with Ross's help and the Larker workshops to take it to the next level and to have the opportunity to do something I've always wanted to do and the difficulty is taking that step because as Ross said it, it's it's having the finance and having Ross's passion for giving people like me the opportunity to work hard learn something new um, and, and just embrace the opportunities that, that that's there really and and if 
I'm lucky enough, as Ross says, there's a lot of actors out there. If I have the image that whoever's looking for somebody like me, I've just got to go in, give it my best shot, and hope that this is the face they're looking for. And if they like me and, and they think they can work with me for two to three months on a project, and I'm their guy, then great, thank you very much. That's, that's as good as it gets. So I was very lucky. So by about 14 years of age, I knew I wanted to be an actor. So I started going back and forth to London, doing auditions. Um, I got my places in drama school, got my scholarship and I went. Um, I did the whole Royal Shakespeare Company, just Festival Theatre, did the whole theatre, the West End for quite a long time. Um, and then I fell into TV because what happened was I was a big guy and I don't look like a typical actor. And as I got older, my face got more rugged. And as it got more rugged, I looked harder. And then all of a sudden I found my niche. And then shows like Game of Thrones came about. And Game of Thrones needed guys with rugged faces and big bodies who weren't typical looking actors. And so all of a sudden, my career leapt from being a classical actor to suddenly being a top television actor. And I did the whole run of shows, Da Vinci's Demons, The Vast Executioner, The Musketeers. I was in Hollyoaks for a season. All of that based on about the fact that all of a sudden, about 10 years ago, you could be a leading man without being the most handsome man in the world. So my whole genre is television and film based. I've got three films coming out next year that I shot last year and I've just signed on to a Hollywood feature this morning so I start shooting that in April. And I do all that and that is the experience that I want to give to these guys yeah. so that they learn from an actor who is currently working as opposed to a failed actor who's now running a drama school somewhere because he couldn't get a job. What's all that about? If, if, like me, you have a passion for acting and you really, really want to learn the soup to nuts of how to, to, to go from basically nothing to being, um, I wouldn't say an experienced actor, but a more, um, what's the word? Confident. For? Confident. Confident's a great word. Confident actor. These are the workshops for you. It's one of those things that, as I said earlier, you need to want to learn day after day and if you've got the passion for it you're going to win you're going to succeed and and i and i don't want to use the word cheap inexpensive training by a passionate guy that will give it to you both barrels you know if you don't mind a little bit of swearing now and again because as actors we do tend to swear a lot but just come along experience it do 10 weeks and i kid you not after 10 weeks you'll want to come back for the next 10 weeks and the 10 weeks after that because these are the courses for you guys. Come and join us, have a bit of fun, and see what we can turn you into. Not we, him. <laughs>